the Nuggets casually pulled off the most dominant championship run in recent memory, and potentially of all time. Denver became the third team over the last 20 years next to the 07 Spurs and 17 Warriors to finish 16-4 or better in the postseason. Serbian phenom Nikola Jokic is the only player to ever lead a playoff run in points, rebounds, and assists. Canadian assassin Jamal Murray is the fourth player next to Magic, Jordan, and Braun to average 20 plus points and 10 plus assists in a playoff run. Despite the dominance, he and this Nuggets team have humbly taken it all in stride. Jokic would try to mimic the American champagne spray during Denver's locker room celly, but after winning the finals, it's clear the man is spent, saying post-game after beating Miami in five, nobody likes his job, or maybe they do, they're lying. In his courtside interview after securing his first chip, here's what he had to say to Lisa Salters. Yeah, now you are an NBA champion, Nicola. How does that feel? It's good. It's good. The job is done. We can go home now. Based off that and his reaction to having to attend the parade. So I'm curious what you are feeling right now and if you're looking forward to a parade coming up in Denver. When is parade? When is parade? Thursday. No. I need to go home. It's safe to say Nicole is ready to pack everything up and go back to his horses in Sombor. It goes to show you how special of a player he really is when you consider the facts that his first championship run saw him average 30-14-10 and 10 on a 55-46-80 shooting split, beat KD and Booker in 6, beat LeBron and AD in 4, beat playoff Jimmy in 5, post the most playoff triple doubles ever, tally the most assists ever by a center, put up the first 30-20-10 finals game, and win finals MVP, but all he wanted to do was rest up and get ready to do it all over again. As the meme goes, this kid is now in full control of the NBA. Anything is possible, as Kevin Garnett would say, and while we didn't get too many great quotes from the naturally hilarious Jokic, he did bless us with this clip. You were the 41st pick in the draft. A Taco Bell commercial was running when your pick was announced. What do you think of that now? <laughs> they believe in the fat boy, and it <laughs> seems like uh, it worked out. Yeah, don't, don't bet against the fat boy. Also proving anything is possible, Jamal Murray's return from an ACL tear in which he suffered in early 2021 has been storybook. It's unfortunately not talked about nearly enough how, after missing the entirety of the 2021-22 season, Murray would say to coach Mike Malone, Man, are you gonna trade me? I'm damaged goods. Are you guys gonna trade me now? Malone would give Jamal a hug and respond with, Hell no, you're ours, we love you, we're gonna help you get back, and you're gonna be a better player for it. Now, the sharpshooter from Kentucky and the one head coach that he's had in this league, in Mike Malone, have achieved the ultimate glory. For Murray to come back as well as he did from a career-altering injury is just special, and it speaks to his belief in himself, his general determination as a human being, and his work ethic. It also describes his trusting of the process, given he knew that things were going to be rough in his first few games of 22-23, coming back from such a devastating injury. I knew I was going to suck for the first few games. Like I, I had to live with that. I, I knew I wasn't going to put up 40, 50 points in the first couple games. I always say, if you go back to the first game in Utah, I, I picked up the ball in the paint like five times I could count. Like. I was so lost. Um, I had never felt being that lost in the court before. I just didn't want to go into the paint um, or jump or land or uh, feel contact and um, just how far I've come from that moment. You know, I still have different moments where I'm tentative, best word for me to put it, um, to do certain actions, you know, rebounding among everybody or, um, but I've just gotten so much better at that and just putting that behind, you know, not just me, um, Mike too. You know, I think Mike, I shout out to Mike. He's gone through so many different injuries and just see him constantly um, stay locked in, be a team player and grow his game um, in different aspects, have an all around game, you know, even if he's not shooting well, it's just really great to see the growth of this team. And um, yeah, that first game in Utah, I was, I was, uh, I don't want to say scared because I wasn't, I was confident, but I was so tentative in everything I was doing. And to see from that game to this game, to the finals game where I've come, it's just, um, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just happy for myself. Throughout their entire playoff run, 
Mike Malone and the players were constantly praising the Denver crowd, which speaks to how dedicated Nuggets Nation is. It also speaks to how solid the media is, as while they aren't afraid to ask the tough questions, they just as importantly weren't afraid to ask the easy questions to get responses about the Nuggets crowd. From a Raptor fan's perspective, whose team didn't give a single take on what the fans meant for seemingly the entire 22-23 season, the Nuggets media deserves credit for shedding light on the team's supporters, who at the end of the day, make it all happen. Regarding the adversity Jamal's teammate Jokic overcame in the MVP race with Embiid facing criticism of being a stat patter, here were Murray's thoughts on that. Uh, I seen a picture of uh, Yoke and MB running for MVP, and um, Yo keep, keeps running. It's called a meme. No, it's called a meme. And it, I think that just speaks so much to what his mindset is. Like, you know, I got mad at him today in the game because he kept passing the ball. Like, I hit him in the pocket, he has a floater, and he passed it out of bounds, turnover. I'm like, bro, just shoot it. But that's just part of him, you know, like that's that's just his game and that's what makes us so good is you have to, even when he's open and guys are late, you still have to guard him and guard everybody else. You also get a feel for the genuine appreciation Jamal has for the position he and his teammates are in when seeing clips like this one of him thanking Nuggets owner Stan Kroenke. Where to get you one, baby? I know. Where to get you, you one? Thank you. I appreciate you staying patient oh, with me. Oh, no. I appreciate you staying patient with me. Y'all could have done it. We got a different route. I appreciate you staying with me, man. We got a bend. I love you. Meanwhile, the brotherhood of Jokic and Murray is what makes everything tick. Despite Mike Greenberg claiming the Nuggets weren't marketable, or Nick Wright saying nobody wants to watch Nikola Jokic, in a year where the championship team featured one top player from a small town in Serbia and another top player from a small town in Canada, the NBA set a record for its most ever social media views in a playoff run with 8 billion. Regarding traditional media, the NBA had its most watched playoff run in 5 years, tallying 5.47 million average viewers per game. It's time to start labeling Denver as a basketball town once and for all. For Nikola Jokic, the best part about this man, outside of the fact that he's an all-time great player between the lines, no matter who says he's not a top 75 player of all time, is the man's mentality. It wouldn't be right to post an individual funny moment or meme of the man, because he's got such a witty sense of humor that makes him naturally hilarious. This allows him to not take everything so seriously which helps him stay in the moment, as well as centered mentally both on and off the court. It's that very mix of realization and relaxation that's key to achieving success in whatever you do. Specifically in such a crazy business like the NBA, not to mention in the social media era, having Jokic's laid back yet focused edge is critical. Strictly basketball wise, and Jokic also keeps it simple. Jokic was quoted as saying almost 10 years ago at this point, which seems to hold true to this day, basketball is about teammates. When I'm open, I score. When I'm not, I pass. I play basketball as simple as I can. I don't jump high. I don't run fast. I don't think so much about the NBA. Jokic is all about just getting his business done between the lines, joking about it with the media and of course his friends and family, then going to sleep. While the late Kobe Bryant's mindset contradicts that, as Bean was famously quoted as once saying, if you love what you do and it's making you happy, all the hard work and perseverance will pay off, both Kobe and Nikola's mindsets are respectable. Remember, Jokic grew up on a farm on a different side of the hemisphere than many adopting Kobe's love what you do mentality. The difference in approaches in part displays the cultural variance between a Serbian and an American, both methods, again, are respectable and interchangeable between cultures. Kobe's is the big city approach, while Nikola's is the country approach. One thing both Nikola and Kobe can agree on is the journey. Kobe was once quoted as saying, those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway, that is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. 
And here was Jokic on the Nuggets journey to win the 2023 championship. It was a long journey. I think you deserve it. This is, this is a great, great group of guys. Great group of guys. The mentalities from Jokic and Murray, of course, trickle down to the team's other top options, whether it's Michael Porter Jr., Contavious Caldwell Pope, Bruce Brown, Christian Brown, or Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon's mantra has fit in perfectly with this Nuggets team ever since he was dealt to them at the 2021 trade deadline. Gordon's easygoing dedication makes him both a fan favorite and anyone's favorite teammate. Aaron evidently stays true to himself, a mentality that carries over to the court where he compliments the abilities of Jokic and Murray offensively by being the team's best slasher. Defensively, it's a criminally under-talked about narrative how he's the team's most valuable player on that end. Just take his performance in Game 1 of the Finals, for example. Gordon's screen navigation, ruthless hustle, knowingness of the scouting report, low center of gravity, positioning, and forceful activity meshes together with his 7-foot wingspan to cause one hell of an issue for attacking players. But going back to Gordon's mindset, and it's his gratitude and top-notch body language which kind of defines what Denver is all about. This Nuggets team won their championship in stride and with a sense of genuine purpose and humbleness. It's that mentality which is going to allow them to compete for championships throughout this entire decade. From owner Stan Kroenke through to the coaching staff led by Mike Malone, to the players fueled by Nikola and Jamal, carrying into the team's fan base and media, it's how Denver did it all with class and casualness, which is what they'll be remembered for. Paired with a firm belief in themselves, and this Nuggets team has laid out the mental guideline for 29 other squads attempting to replicate what they just did. For now, it's just about time for the Mile High to throw a parade inside their city. If you enjoyed that video and want to see more, help the channel reach 100k by subscribing. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.